Welcome back to Not One Videos. Today I'm going to show you how to make this awesome dice tower complete with lights and a spiral staircase. Okay, so the classic dice tower. I should have probably done this build a long time ago on this channel, but I kept getting distracted by bigger projects. Gladly this week, I had a call from my friend Chris, who is a member of my D&D party, and he commissioned me to build one. And as with the beginnings of many a dice tower, starting with an empty Pringles can, I started mine with what I had to hand, an empty hot chocolate pot. One of the things I wanted to do when making this tower was to have a spiral staircase for the dice to tumble down. So after I had cut some perfect circles of XPS foam using the Shifting Land Circle Cutter, I drew out some makeshift jigs on cardstock, which meant I was able to cut the perfect shapes for a spiral staircase and still leave some space for electronics inside the can, which we will get to a little bit later on. Don't be too concerned about the fact that the circles were cut with a proxon. This is not an essential tool for this build. You could easily make all of the cuts with this build with a sharp knife. In fact, when it comes to carving the actual stairs, a knife is a perfect tool for the job. Any jagged edges will fit in perfectly as worn and broken stonework. Once all of your stairs are carved, it is as simple as gluing your pieces together with hot glue and you should have a spiral staircase that fits perfectly into the pot. Another feature that I wanted to have in my dice tower was some windows with lights behind them. So I used these nice little wooden windows which I got from Shifting Lands. Now, one thing I didn't want to do with this dice tower was to lay lots and lots of foam bricks. I see people doing this a lot and it works really well, but I wanted to have a really irregular stonework, kind of like the stonework in the corner towers of Dunluce Castle, which I visited in August. So to avoid laying the bricks, I cut one thin sheet of XPS foam, which I bent using the edge of the table and glued it round the edge of the can using a combination of hot glue and PVA glue. Using the hot glue means that you get an instant bond and then the PVA makes sure that the whole surface of the foam is glued to the can without any serious melting. I also tied some string around the can and left it to dry in the radiator just to make sure that the foam was pressed nicely against the cardboard with no gaps. This means when it comes to carving the bricks a little later on, you don't have bits of foam falling away that haven't stuck properly. So at this point in my build, I kind of started jumping around between tasks a little. First I glued in the windows to make sure that they were dry and solid as quickly as possible in the build. And then I kind of started to carve in the stonework, but I realized it would be better to finish the structure of the build first and then do all of the stone carving at once. I made the crest of the tower with turrets kind of loosely based around the shapes that you see in Minas Tirith in the Lord of the Rings. The one downside to using this technique with wrap foam is that it does leave a seam line down the back of the tower, which is unsightly. Gladly this is easily fixed by adding some more details like butt wrist supports. These were offcuts from some dwarven pillars that I made earlier this year and they fit into this project perfectly. Now carving bricks might seem like a tedious task. I usually do this while watching something in the evening and for me the results are worth the time that it takes. The control that you have using a pen to organically grow your brick pattern as you go means that you get a really nice random placement, something I find harder to do when I'm gluing bricks. There are lots of little jobs that take time like this when it comes to crafting, gluing bricks, gluing shingles, etc. You just have to put the time in to get the results that you want. Having said that, carving the textures in is one of the quicker ways of doing this, I think. Speaking of texture, don't forget the old tinfoil ball trick. Right, back to those windows. I glued some parchment paper behind the windows so that I could pour some UV resin into the recess. Now, if you don't have UV resin, you could easily use plastic that you get from food packaging. But UV resin does the job perfectly. Just remember to cure the resin from both sides. Quick tip when crafting, always make sure not to destroy your previous project in the process. Moving on to the bottom section of the tower, I wanted to create a courtyard for the dice to fall into so that the dice don't just spill out all over the gaming table. I used 3mm thick MDF for the base and I carved a gap in the middle to house my battery pack when it comes to fitting my lights. To build up my rocky terrain, I stacked up some sheets of my old friend PIR foam. This has become my go-to material for rock textures, but you could easily use XPS foam or even build up the base with sculpt mold or paper mache if you can't get this stuff. Once the base was glued, it was time to move on to my favourite bit, soldering together the lights. I used three flicker LEDs, that's hard to say, that I took out of some old candle tea lights and I made sure to wire them up in parallel. Once they were all soldered together, I glued them in around the stairs making sure that each bulb was placed behind the window. And I added a little panel to prevent the dice from jumping over the gap, before I glued the stairs and lights into the tower using PVA glue. 
It's a good idea to check your lights again at this point before gluing your tower down. After the tower is glued to the base, they are permanent. A couple of weeks ago, I did a video on how to make stratified rock textures by brushing into PIR foam with a bristle brush. Every time I use this trick, it makes me happy. It's just so easy to get a really nice texture with virtually no effort. Now, at this point in the build, things are pretty self-explanatory from the footage on how I piece things together. So I thought I'd take a little opportunity to start a little chat with you guys. Maybe you can let me know in the comments below what you think of this build, what you like, what you don't like, and what you would do differently. Do you prefer to lay individual bricks or do you like to carve them in by using a pen or a pencil? Have you made a dice tower before and what materials did you use? You get the idea. Every crafter is different and the techniques I am using are just a few of the awesome methods that can be used. There are many different ways to skin a cat as they say, although I have no plans on actually skinning a cat. I am really interested in what you guys think. Also, any interaction you guys can give me in the comments or just by smashing the like button helps to give this video a chance to get out to more viewers who may find it useful. If you're new to the channel and you're enjoying the video, please consider subscribing. I try to put out a couple of videos a month making cool stuff and seeing the channel grow really helps to make the journey feel like it's progressing. Okay, moving into the final stages of the build. I was super happy with this little gate that I printed off. If anyone is interested in where to get the STL for this, you can download it for free from Thingiverse. I will leave a link in the description below this video. And with that, I'm on to gluing lots and lots of bark of varying shapes and sizes to the project. Bark really is a crafter's best friend in my opinion. You can use it for boulders, you can use it for rocks, and you can use it for fine dust. And it is at this point that Pac-Man decided to show up and lend his big fat head to the project. Well, the floor for the roof of the dice tower anyway. Again, I used a pen to carve in the textures for the wood grain. I used to scrape my wood textures in using a wire brush, but I saw my friend Slavko, AKA the Mini Mason do it this way. And I just love the slightly exaggerated wood grain. So I've been doing it that way ever since. I used some strips of XPS foam to add a little detail and extra strength around the gap at the top of the stairs and pinned them as the glue dried. As with my other recent videos, I've started to move away from doing full-on paint tutorials in each video. It is suffice to say that I start with my darkest colours and work my way up to the brightest colours for the highlights. What I would recommend, however, is checking out a video by Zorbzorb called Ultimate Stone Painting Guide, especially his dungeon grind painting scheme. Now, I didn't follow his exact colour palette, but the principles are the same and I love the results. Okay, time to have a flocking good time with some foam flocks from Geek Gaming Scenics. I sprinkle on two or three different colours in different patches to give the variation in colour and make it look a little bit more organic, before adding some more PVA glue and finishing it off with a mixed blend of static grass. You don't really need an applicator for the step, you could just sprinkle it on by hand, which is probably a lot less messy anyway. I then give a quick spritz with Geek Gaming Scenic sealant. For the gate at the front of the courtyard, I wanted it to look old, rusty and weathered. For this, I used three paints from Army Painter, plate metal, dry rust and a strong tone wash. Let me know in the comments if you have a better way of doing your rust effects. I then added some of these lovely heather tufts just to add a splash of colour to the project. And for the very last detail, Chris asked me to include the name Rydon Fells in the project, so I killed off his D&D character and pinned him to a post as a warning to those who may enter. And with that, it's time for the reveal. that is the end of my epic dice tower build and I'm really really pleased with the result and I kind of don't want to give it away I want to keep it for myself but I really hope that Chris likes it before I go guys I just want to say a massive thanks as always to my patrons you guys are still rocking my world and keeping me afloat and really helping me out with materials etc 
If you are new to the channel, please remember to subscribe, please like this video, and yeah, if you want to join me on Patreon, you can come over there and see some behind the scenes stuff, what's going on. Alright guys, thanks so much for watching, and yeah, hopefully I'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye. That's two Nat 20s. <laughs> I have to show you. That is ridiculous. Bye. <laughs>